Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where today we're going to have another look into what's been going on in the Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 playthrough. And we've had, well, various shortages that we're going to be trying to dig our way through and, and see, if, see how many of them we managed to solve in the last stream. The first shortage we're going to take a look at is related to the science production over here. So we've got all the, we've got loads and loads of science packs flowing in, as you can see. But there's a notable gap along here where the advanced science packs are supposed to be coming from, and that they're coming from up here. Oh dear, there's one type of data card missing along here, and we're starting to run a bit low on the other one. And those are the two that are brought in by train, or two of the ones that are brought in by train from over, over yonder, down here somewhere. And the problem is, well, it's these ones, the upvote data, and, and as, we, as you can see, they're not, they're not being made because there's a gap on the belt down here, and that is a problem because we don't have any of these electronic control units being brought in uh, through the system uh, because there's a problem with those. So let's nip down to the planet and have a quick look at where they come from. Cracky, there's a lot of bots doing stuff at the moment. Anyway, those come from over here, and I showed you this um, in the last, sometime in the last week or two, I can't remember exactly when, but yes, the, these electronic control units are being made over here and to be chucked into a train to be taken away. However, as you, the, uh, the um, observant among you will have noticed, they're not being made at the moment, and I bet that's due to a whole, oh no, that's due to a, that's due to a low density structure problem. I thought it was gonna be the Immersite crystal, but no, it's the low density structures, which are supposed to be being made over here, in the, uh, in the beryllium pro products area. So we've got in, in here, we've got the supply of beryllium coming in and we're making the, the beryllium poles, the beryllium scaffolds, the beryllium bulkheads and, and so on all along here. And because these take a large quantity of the beryllium scaffolds, I think it is, uh, up here, we thought we might as well have these made up here as well. However, we're not actually making the beryllium scaffolds at the moment because we've run out of immersium plate. So I was right, it was it was an immersite related thing somewhere down the line. However, it's the immersium plate, not the, not the immersium crystals that we've run out of. And so we need to start making these again. We need to we need to start bringing in immersion plates so we can start making these, so we can make the low density structures, so that we can make those control units, so that we can make those data cards, and then make the advanced science packs and carry on doing actual science MacGuffin stuff. And this was um, a bit of a shock because I didn't didn't realise we were quite so low on those. Uh, low density structures are, however, a thing that you rip through in enormous quantities because they're used for making all of a lot of the stuff up in space. So all, a lot of the machines use them in quite large quantities. The space scaffolding uses them in huge quantities. So when you're building up large areas of scaffolding you're going to get through enormous quantities of them and so as you can see now as well science is using them as well so, and so in order to sort this out well we just straight up don't have enough immersion plates on this planet so I had to go out to Taras to finish off the immersion build that I was working on in the last stream and that is this shiny new system. So this is working quite nicely. This, this is a big upgrade from what we had before, but for two, two main reasons. One is that it uses tier six productivity modules basically throughout, anywhere it can. And that means it gets through a lot less input for the same amount of output. And also because it's producing both plates and crystals. Now, rather notably, we seem to have enough plates on, on we seem to think we have enough plates in the spaceship at the moment because this belt has stopped running. We're only outputting crystals at the moment and that's, interesting and a bit surprising but I guess the, what we'll, we'll have to take a bit of a look through the uh, through the whole system around here and try and work out what's going on over here this design you'll be familiar with from last week because I uh, I, I ran through it in in, in the uh, in the blueprint editor but now I've actually managed to make it so I flew out here twice the first time right at the beginning of the stream I brought pretty much everything I was going to need except for quite a lot of the modules because we had some horrendous shortages of, of, of those and I'll talk about that in a bit more in a moment but um, I brought out as much as I could and got this whole and got the whole system laid out and and, and, and running um, but over here but it was struggling quite a lot because over here we didn't have a lot of these productivity modules and we didn't have a lot of the speed modules which meant that despite having a certain certain amount of uh, core chunks coming in here as you can see we weren't getting very much of the actual useful things out at the other end it was running very very slowly however the second time I came out I was able to upgrade it and now you can see that we've got a nice steady stream of all of these things all of the uh, core chunks flowing in over here and over on the other side we've got a nice well we would have a nice healthy stream of both of them flowing out if they were both being requested at the moment but as it is we just have a full I was going to say we have a full green belt, but it's not a full green belt because it gets downgraded to blue fairly quickly. And the same, I think, yes, same happens to the plates as well. So we've got a blue belt of each one coming out. And that seems like quite a good quantity to have. We've also got a pair of dump belts down here, so these, I think these are both green uh, pretty much all the way, because at one point we seem to be producing enormous quantities of, of, of waste over here. Now, as you can tell by looking at these two belts, this one is basically full, and this one is probably more than half full, so we definitely need to have the two different belts over there taking all the, all the junk away. You produce a surprisingly large amount of, of byproduct and scrap from these from these systems, so you can see over here we've got uh, we've got all of the ores and things coming out of the core processing down here, when, uh, and we've got a load of stone coming down here from the original core chunk uh, processing and so all of that needs to flow away along this belt. Now I do have an overflow here so if we find out that the the, uh, sil the sulfur that's coming down this belt because you produce huge amounts of sulfur as a byproduct of immersion processing 
If we find that the sulfur is completely clogging up this belt, then in theory it can push back all the way up here and overflow up into this one. That hasn't happened at the moment, but in theory it could happen. Um, and along here as well we have an emergency overflow that will take any excess sand out from here and pass it down here. Uh, this is all a little bit... It's, it's, not, it's not perfectly set up at the moment. I could do with a bit more side balancing, especially on these belts along here. But the system does, overall, it, it basically works quite reasonably nicely. In fact, what I could do along here, I could, I could side balance this one fairly easily, but these two, not so much. And so as you can see, we've got, we've got priorities set up. So we're pulling the sand out to go into the in, into making the quartz to make the, uh, the inner site as much as possible. But there is always going to be some overflow, and that's heading down here. That said, if we had better side balancing going on, going on along here, I reckon we could potentially get more of the sand going up this way. Uh, that said, that said, we clearly have more than enough sand in these machines. They are working absolutely fine. So I don't think there's any real reason to, uh, to, to, to mess with this. It is, it is working. Then along here, we're taking some of the outputs along here. So we've got the raw, raw rare metals coming out. And they are, in theory, being cooked up into, into uh, rare metals. However, because we're not actually making any of the immersion plate at the moment, and that's the one that requires the rare metals, though that's, that's jammed up. And so we are, we are actually disposing of rare metals down this belt here, which is a bit of a shame. Maybe I should be putting in some sort of stockpile of the rare metals over here, or at least of the raw rare metals. Uh, because we don't want, ideally we don't really want to be shipping this away back to Norvis, just to ship it back out again as rare metals when we have a sudden demand for it. Hmm. We're also pulling out some of the iron ore here that's being taken up here to be cooked into iron plates, partly because we need it to make the sulfuric acid, but also because we need quite a lot of it down here in order to make steel for the barrels to get rid of the other overflow. So this is all, all working generally quite nicely. It's a bit, there's a bit of a tangle of spaghetti in the middle over here, but it's working quite well. We, we have a nice steady stream of the, uh, of, of the output, of, well, of the crystals at least coming out over here. As part of the expansion here, I did put in a few more core mining drills. So I put in another, I think there's another couple over here, so probably that one and, and this one down here. And, uh, and I've copied Mark's design, because Mark was the one who originally came out to this planet and set, set the systems up, I believe. He certainly came out and set up the second tier. In fact, let's have a look. So this over here is the first tier. Yes, that was, that was Mark as well. So Mark, Mark has been entirely responsible for this planet up until now, uh, and then I came in and I ripped up most of his um, second generation processing system over here and replaced it with my third generation one over here. So there's been quite a bit of expansion, but I'll touch on why I did that in a moment. So, because it, because this is a Mark planet, all of the core fragments are being brought in by belts, because he likes his really, really long belts. And that does seem to be absolutely fine. So you can see down here we've got another core mining drill here, churning them out along this yellow belt, that then adds onto this blue belt over here. And, yeah, the, the belts are fast enough. They're not very well side balanced, once again, but it is pl fl flowing through and it's able to take all of the stuff that's being brought through up here. And then that can go, then go and join onto some more belts up here. And I reckon that if I go around and look at all of the core mines, so there's some more down here, extra ones that I put in down here, if I go around and look at all of those, and if there's gaps on the belts where they're where they're outputting like this, then this means that the core mines are all running as fast as they possibly can, and therefore the belts are sufficient, so I don't need to worry about the system as it is. And if I look at this one as well, yes, once again, there are gaps on the belts coming out of this one. And so at the end of the stream, I went around and I checked all of them, and they all had gaps on the belts where they were outputting. And so even if the belts up here might look a little bit full in places, in fact, actually, they're not completely full. There, there are gaps on the belts up here. Uh, even, but even if they did, uh, we, we know that if all the mines have got those gaps on them, then we are getting the resources through out of the mines as fast as we possibly can. And therefore, if, and if we're feeding them all in here and it's not jamming up, then we are using these up, as fa again, as fast as we possibly can. Now, potentially, when we do some more research, research into mining productivity, we might start to struggle a bit. But I think at that point, as long as we have the outputs over here running as fast as they can, then maybe things are actually absolutely okay. So I did want to have a look at where all of the immersite was going, why, and more to the point, why the uh, immersite plates aren't running. So over here, we clearly reckon we've got enough. That's how these systems work. We're hooking them up to this 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 belt over here, and we've got, okay, so we've got a request coming in saying yes, we would like some more um, immersite crystals. We don't seem to say we're not saying we want more immersite plates, which is weird because that's one we're short of. So let's have a look up in space. Up here we have a ship that is, yeah, it's filling up with crystals. We've got about 10,000 of them or so in there. The ship is um, is about uh, a bit over a third full. So that's, I mean, the system is working. We are bringing those plates through. However, if we now go and have a look at Norbit, yes, we can see over here that the Taras ship is completely full of, or the Taras spaceport is completely full of plate. So I think what's happening here is that the train that is, what is working here is going back and forth Let's have a look at this train. So this train, yes, it's going from the Immersite pickup, and then it's endlessly going to Immersite crystal drop. Going over there, why is there inactivity? Or maybe we'll drop it. Maybe there, maybe it's found some crystals to drop off. 
I think it found some crystals to drop off, but it's on its way back now to pick up some more stuff. And so it's going to pull in here, and it's going to go, I can't find any crystals, so it's going to leave again immediately and go to Immersite Crystal Drop, and that's not helpful. I could tell it manually to go to Norvis Down and head over that way, and then that'll take some down to the ground, take the plates down to the ground, at least we'll, we'll be able to uh, unload some of those. But we're in a rather weird position here, where the lack of crystals in the spaceport means we're not actually able to deliver any plates anywhere. And... Yeah, that's problematic. Now, I think it's probably going to be okay going forwards because we're going to have enough... We're going to have the ship coming back in and, and uh, see, a Taras ship has now arrived and it's got a load of crystal to unload. Um, but the, 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 the slight problem it's going to have here is it's going to have to unload all of the sand and sulfur and stone and all of that stuff as well. Um, and that might come out before the crystal does. In fact, it is coming out before the crystal is. So we've, we've still got a little bit of a problem around here. But I think it is going to sort itself out because we do have almost 16,000 crystal between these two things here and another 1,000 plate. Uh, so I think, when, I think when this ship empties, we'll probably be okay. The problem is with the Immersite is that it brings enormous quantities of sand back. And as you can see, st sand stacks up very, very highly. It stacks all the way up to 200 and that means it takes this system quite a long time to unload it because it has to push it down these belts and it has to all come out in these inserters uh, so unloading these ships is a bit slow but I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that things will be okay here this will sort itself out and we'll end up with all of the um, all, all of the Immersite working properly we just need to wait for this ship to empty itself and then uh, and it'll be okay and then for the other one to come over as well and then it'll be even more okay at least that's my hope now, I said earlier that I tore up all of, um, well, most of Mark's old Immersite production system over here, and there were a couple of reasons for it. One of them was that I was running really, really low on green belts to put in all these disposal chutes that I need along here, so I wanted to increase the amount, of, I wanted to steal all of his green belts, essentially. <laughs> um, and the other one was because, well, I also wanted to steal all of the uh, all of the core chunks he was taking. So previously, we had these belts bringing up the core chunks along here, and then I think there was a belt coming up here to go into the bottom of his processing facility. And that made a lot of sense when we were um, making the emersite here that was the way we wanted the core chunks to go but I felt, and, I, and he agreed with this, that it was going to, that it was worth taking them away and putting them into this system because this is built around the tier six productivity modules, and that means that for every core chunk that comes in, we'll get quite a lot more um, immersite out of the other end because it's just being processed that bit more efficiently, and that means we'll get we'll get a bit more flowing through, and things should just run run a bit more um, a bit more productively, a bit more efficiently. We'll get more out for the amount of input we put in. And so that, as I said, flows down here. There is also the, t the original tier one system here, but hopefully, yeah, we've got a solid belt coming through here. So with the priorities I've set on here, and I think on, yes, on this belt as well, we're now making sure that we only take the Immersite uh, crystals and the Immersion plates from the new system um, rather than from the old system, because this one has really, really poor productivity in it, and it's just generally, it's just generally bad. And as well as that, this one is working off the Immersite mines, so not the core mines. So we've got an even even worse productivity going on here. So yeah, we definitely don't want to um, we don't want to use this as much at all if we can avoid it. That said, I've left it in here and just ticking over with the assumption that it's going to back up relatively quickly, and it looks like it is. I, su I suspect we're just filling these pipes up along here now, and once these finally fill up, the whole system will will eventually grind to a halt, and we'll just we'll just have a stockpile available here in case of an emergency, like we start using it faster than the core mines are capable of producing it. But in the short term, I don't expect that to be a problem. I think we're producing it more than fast enough down here. And so we'll, uh, yeah, we can chuck it all in here and then put it into the train to take it to take it away. I mentioned earlier that it took me a couple of tries going out to, um, to Taras to, in order to get in all of the uh, all the modules I needed. And that was partly down to, there was a couple of things. We short, I was trying to use lots and lots of speed modules, tier six, tier six of course, and also lots of productivity modules, and again, of tier six. And we've had we've had some shortages of those. And you can see over here, there's a there is a complete lack of, uh, of iridium um, girders coming in here and a lack of iridium plates coming in here because we are still rather short of iridium. And this has been a, a bit of a running theme. And then up here, we seem to have a bit of a shortage of one of the uh, one of the biologicals. And I think this is again not, this this is a running theme as well. However, I think this one is more due to the sheer quantity of them that's required. If we have a look in here, we'll, well, how, how how bad is this one? Yes, this requires 120 vitamin extract. That's a lot. This one then takes in. Only 50 bioscrubbers, that's a lot, but it's not quite as crazy. And then over here, we're trying to take in 140 vitalic reagents. So, so we've, there's been a general struggle along here, because even if you bring in a train load of, uh, of, of, that's mixed up between all of those things, it's still, it's not going to go all that far when you start trying to make high-tier modules out of it. And because each one of these requires two of the previous tier of modules, um, when I say this one, okay, this one requires 120 vitamolange extract, okay, but it then requires 240 to make the tier 5, and it requires 480 vitamolange extract in order to make the tier 6. 
six. These are expensive modules. They are very, very pricey. And we do have a good, healthy uh, logistics system going between Big Rid and, and Norbit, bringing over all of the Vitamalange products. But even so, there's just so much demand on them over here that, it's, that it struggles. Similarly, down here, where we've got, um, you, you, we need to have... Uh, 120 iridium plates to make the uh, to make the tier fours. That means again 480 to make the tier sixes, um, and then you you then also need the uh, you need the, the heavy bearings, um, and we need 140 of them, and then here we need 100 of the girders, and so you can see how these add up very very quickly, and it gets to enormous enormous quantities of everything. And so to help out where I could, I came over to uh, down on Norvis and I put the tier six productivity modules in all these machines that are making the girders. And I think they should probably be going in the ones making the uh, making the, making the uh, bearings as well, because we're getting through a lot of those, and possibly the ones making the bulkheads. Although but the bulkheads we don't seem to get through in anything like the same sort of quantities. But yeah, the girders we are absolutely ripping through huge numbers of them. And so I wanted to yeah I, I shoved the productivity modules in here, and in order to get them down here, I then put a load in the down to the ground box up here. So we have a uh, a blue chest here, and we, you can program anything you want into this blue chest like that and then it'll request that meant it'll request that thing to be brought over and then it'll get dropped into this chest put into here and it will get taken down by the train system and unloaded over here eventually and sorted out into this purple chest over here so for some reason we've had a couple of tier 2 uh, productivity modules come down I think that's because we just bring those down whenever we can and then they should eventually find their way over to module city up here where they'll then be upgraded to tier threes, taken back up into space, and then and then dealt with up there, and turned into eventually turned into the tier sixes that we're actually using. So you can see it along here, we're churning through quite a lot of vulcanite in order to make the tier threes, because again, you need two tier threes to make a tier four, two tier fours to make a tier five, etc., etc., etc. And there we go. There, 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 there are those uh, tier two modules that just came through. So those can be put out, out on this belt, where they'll go up to be made into the tier threes. So the system is all fairly organised, and it will tidy all this stuff up and send it off to the appropriate place, but it takes a while to get it all there. The problem actually carries on a bit further up the chain though, so as you can see here, we've run out of Iridium in the Kothar station up in Norbit, so that's a bit of a problem. However, if we look down on actual Kothar itself, you can see there's quite a lot of the, uh, there's a decent amount of the Iridium flowing out here and going into the uh, warehouse to go into the train to be sent to the spaceship to be, to be taken away. And so this is now all... Kind of, it is all working again now. We've just unfortunately, because we've had a bit of a shortage of it, we have a lot of buffers to fill. So along here, you can see there's a there's quite a lot of um, crushed iridite here, but it's coming through a little bit slowly. I wonder what we're short of at the moment because previously, uh, oh no, yeah, we're, sh oh, we're short of hydrogen chloride now. That's a, that's that's weird. So when we were looking at it in the in the previous stream, we discovered the problem was the nitric acid. So we traced that back to um, Mike's nitric acid production system down here where the nitric acid is being made from the ammonia, which is being made from um, hydrogen and nitrogen, which are being pulled out of the air down here. And so we've, we stuck in some extra machines along here, um, because we discovered that, I think this is probably another one of the things that was broken due to the update, we weren't making anything like enough hydrogen. So I dropped in another two, two copies of the original hydrogen production system over here, and now it seems to be working okay. Mike, Mike came along and topped up the number of uh, vents here to get rid of the oxygen, because I, I, didn't, I hadn't noticed that that was a problem yet. But in overall, we've now got quite a lot more... Uh, um, hydrogen being produced. It's all being pumped through into here. And yes, we now have plenty of hydrogen. And so if we look up here, we have, yeah, lots of nitric acid. It's doing pretty well. Yeah, and if we look over here at the pumps, the other pipes at the other end, then yeah, these pump pipes are nearly full. So this is going well. We have lots of nitric acid. That has been solved. However, all of a sudden, we now have a shortage of hydrogen chloride, which, is, which we hadn't noticed in the previous stream. And that's being made over here. So I think I think it looks like these, these, this, this, the same upgrades need to be done over here. We've got, uh, we've got presumably, yeah, the hydrogen chloride is being made here. These machines are all r mostly running. I think it looks like, oh, we seem to actually, no, we seem to have a shortage of sand coming in. Um, that's interesting. I guess that's going to need a bit of a buff down here then. And then we're going to have a bit more sand being pumped through. That said, I mean, the sand, having a bit more sand would certainly help. Oh yeah, yeah, there's lots of machines up here that just aren't running. So I think, yes, the problem here is a shortage of sand. So maybe the answer is going to be to upgrade this belt to a, a significantly faster one. And also, ah, we've run out of stone here on this input. So it looks like um, Mike is going to have to do another, another fix on, out on Kothar. Because the stone supply that's coming in from this station has, has failed. And... I'm not sure why. Why? Are you, oh, it's all been turned around. All these inserters have been turned around because he was trying to use up the sand from elsewhere. So let's turn these back round again like that. And that'll hopefully mean... Oh, no, that's, that's already an, that's meant to be an input. So if we can get this flowing back round here again, hopefully that will mean that we'll now get enough, enough stone coming through here that we can then crush it down to make it into sand in order to uh, carry on making the sand up here a bit more quickly. 
Um, the sand supply over here, yeah, this, this is this, this sand supply, we are trucking through it nice and quickly, because um, this train doesn't need to go off and get more of it. The sand gets brought to here as a, as a disposal from where it's being made, from where, or rather where the stone is being made from crushing the, uh, the iridium core chunks, and then we, need, we then need to dispose of that somewhere, so M Mike is bringing it over as sand, and then feeding it into the system here, which makes a lot of sense, because we have a voracious appetite for sand here. Um, it just turns out we're not bringing it in quickly enough. Maybe, the, I say, may maybe upgrading this belt would help, but I don't think it would. I think that would just get us through the supply over here a bit more quickly. What is hopefully Hopefully going to help is bringing over all this stone uh, from the other from the other mines and bringing that in and then starting to crush it again and making our making our own sand on site because we just yeah we just don't have enough of it coming through up here to keep all of these machines happy. And so that was a little bit unexpected. I came over here expecting to talk about the uh, nitric acid production, but it turned out to be the hydrogen chloride production. And this just goes to show that um, iridium production is is the complicated one. It's the, diff it's, the, it's the rather overwhelmingly difficult one. And so you can sort of see why it's, it's a little bit of a struggle around here and why we need all... Uh, and uh, and why it's the one that we seem to be having quite a lot of problems with. Um, and also there's... I, I think a little bit of the blame might, might, might belong not to uh, to Mike for the uh, the, way he's, the way he's built some of the things in a slightly overcomplicated way. But it is an over, overly complicated recipe as well. So I'm not going to... I'm definitely not going to entirely blame him for that. However, as you've seen, we do have at least a bit of Iridium coming through. And production has been a bit all over the place. I guess this has been this has been where we've been stuck at with the rate we're producing the nitric acid at, acid at. So then when we fixed it, we got this spike here while we were suddenly using up all the hydrogen chloride that was available in the system. And then it's gone back down to here. This is the level we're currently making the hydrogen chloride at. And so this is the speed we're now, we're now locked to. So hopefully that fix I've made will allow this to then shoot back up and maybe even run constantly at this sort of speed. I hope it does because that would be fantastic. We could do, we could do with having almost twice as much iridium coming through. Because as you can see, if you look at the numbers over here, we're, make, we're using it up faster than we're making it. Uh, it, it it's, not, it's not coping nicely at the moment, but hopefully with a bit of a poke in the right place and a bit, and a bit more hydrogen chloride, this will start to work nicely. When I improved the hydrogen production down on Kothar, I did get a little bit carried away. I put in a bit too much and, I did, and, and loads and loads of modules, and so it was dra draining huge amounts of power. And I have to admit, I didn't think my cunning plan all the way through, so I seriously overdid the um, amount of power that was available. So Mike has come out to um, out to Kothar or Kothorbit and started putting in a lot more solar out here. So we now do actually once again have enough power available. The system is working happily, and um, he, he solved that problem that I created for him. So uh, thank you for dealing with that. Tristan has increased the amount of plastic being brought out to Njord, and that means we are now producing the uh, the blue balls in uh, really in, in good high quantities. That's coming through here and allowing all of the holmium production to to tr tr trundle through at the rate at which it's, it's designed to run at. And so you can see here, we've got a blue belt coming along here and then dropping down to a yellow belt because we're actually not producing it that quickly and a yellow belt is sufficient. <laughs> but that can then run all the way across the world and unload into the um, into the train to go up into the spaceship over here. And yeah, it doesn't look like that much as you see it coming through here, but it's significantly better than it was before. And hopefully this is now, at least once we fill all the buffers up, is going to provide us with enough holmium to get everything working again. And you can see there's been a bit of an increase over the last 10 hours. There's a, a bump up to about here. Uh, presumably that was one of his upgrades and up to here. And then we ran out of plastic. Then he brought the plastic in and it spiked. And now, and now it's sort of trundling along at this sort of rate. So this, hopefully this 348 per minute is going to be is going to be sufficient and is going to keep the factory happy. I guess we'll find out how it goes over the over the lo sort of over the long term. Um, but ho but I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. And if not, we can always send them out there to expand it once again a bit further. Agnair is working very nicely from a production point of view. We have a nice healthy stream of vulcanite coming out here, as you can see. However, it wasn't able to defend itself against that meteor sufficiently well, and we took some damage to some railway lines down on the ground. And this was a bit confusing, because we do have a number of guns here. However, we worked out what we think happened is that we took a strike to Agnorbit first, and then almost immediately afterwards a strike to Agnair, and that meant the guns were still recharging from the first attack when the second one came in. And so, at some point, I plan to come out here and put in some more uh, scaffolding here as you can see and then sort of at least double maybe triple the number of guns we have available and I think that will hopefully keep the planet safe and because I don't I don't whilst it, the that the meteor strike didn't actually matter really because it only damaged some railway and didn't destroy anything it's still something I would prefer to avoid happening in general so I think an, a bit of an upgrade is, is required there 
And since I've been looking at all of the things we are short of in this video, let's have to let's take a look a bit of a look at the graph as well, and and have a have a look at the numbers over here, and and, and see whether it tells us anything we uh, we know we we thought or didn't didn't know beforehand, and also run through some of the changes that Tristan has been making to it. So, for example, over here, we're now no longer monitoring for iron plates or steel plates because those are being made on demand over here. We have a train that will unload the uh, steel ingots, and they'll be made immediately into steel plates when they're required to drop into a train. So this train is now ready to go, but there's nowhere around here where we can me measure the storage. I suppose we could measure what's in the train, but then we just immediately show a shortage whenever the train left, and then show a plen plentiful supply when the train got back again. So it's kind of meaningless to show any sort of numbers there. But he did also hook up the storage over here of these ink of the steel and iron ingots. Those are now linked up onto the green cables here, which goes all the way back down to the graphometer down here. And so we can now see the correct numbers for the uh, for the iron and steel ingots. And as you can see, those are basically full, so that's going really, really well. We've also got liquid rocket fuel on there, and that should probably also be removed because we're just straight up not making that anymore. I don't think we need it for anything, uh, with the possible exception of our spaceships when we land them on planets. But basically, we're not using it, so we're not going to worry about that too much. And there was something else on the oil supplies that he thought was uh, was no longer was no longer relevant. It might have been something like sulfur or um, or plastic. Yeah, plastic. There we go. There's no plastic in here, but that's expected because again, plastic is now made on demand. The train will pull in, the plastic will be made and shoved straight into it, and that means you get nice fresh plastic wherever you are. So uh, delicious. Um, other than that, we seem to be mostly okay. The lithium is is all right. The stone is a bit low, which is interesting because I thought there's, there's something else in my notes saying that Mark found we were very, very, um, we had an excess of stone has been che chewing through it for other things, but that might be worth taking a look at. We also, once again, we seem to be short of blue circuits. So let's go and take a quick look at that because blue circuits should be, uh, should be in plentiful supply. Okay. Are we out of, yes, we're out of the Holmium cables for those. Right. So that comes back to the Holmium problem that I was talking about with the lack of plastic last week, which Tristan has now fixed, but it hasn't filled up any of the buffers yet. So again, yep, still a shortage of Holmium over here. So we are very, very short of uh, blue circuits. So we'll hope, hopefully that'll trickle through once Tristan gets the uh, Holmium production up and running again nicely. And over here, we can see actually we're getting a bit short of beryllium, so uh, we might need to take a look into that. Holmium and iridium we're very, very short of. And then over here, you can see the two emosite things that we've got problems with as well. And also, suddenly there's a problem with Naquium. So actually, it looks like basically all of the exotics, except uh, cryonite and vulcanite, oh, and the, um, and the, uh, the Vita ones, uh, we seem to have massive problems with. So this is going to be something to have a good look into in the next stream, I think, because there's, yeah, there's some big worrying shortages along there. The iridium and the holmium, we've, we've looked at and we believe those are in the process of being fixed, They'd, or rather have been fixed and are now trying to fill their buffers up. The imosite, again, also, I believe, is, is essentially fixed. We're just waiting for that uh, spaceship to manage to unload itself a little bit. Um, <laughs> but over here, the yeah, the beryllium being low is, is, a bit, is a bit weird and a bit of a concern. I think I, I might need to take a bit of a look into that. And then we can see the lights going all over the place for the Arcospheres. But I'll talk about them a bit tomorrow. And looking into some of the smaller things that have been done around the factory in the last stream, well, Tristan's put a little addition in on the uh, the new Smoil area, where we're bringing in any barrels that happen to find their way into the disposal system that contain uh, heavy oil or light oil or petroleum gas. I think it'll be brought over to these blue chests here, where we'll uh, pull pull the liquids out, shove them over into the into this oil processing system up here, and then be able to dispose of the empty barrels through the purple chests here, which will take them away to I presume there is somewhere somewhere else in the base that is requesting the empty barrels and then crushing them down into steel uh, to be used somewhere else and that's probably over I would get I would guess that's going to be over in the ore processing facility over here somewhere because this already spits out lots and lots of um, unneeded barrels that then just pour down the belts over here and will find their way through here to be to go into these pulverizers and be crushed uh, that said I don't see a blue chest around here to be uh, to be calling for them so well, I, I hope they're not all just disappearing into the chests of shame, but it is possible. But no, I think it's likely that Tristan will have thought of that when, when he put the purple chests in. And so there'll be, there'll be something sensible will be happening with those, but I don't know what it is. Over here, we seem to have about about a third of a warehouse worth of barrels, and we're we're chugging through them gradually down here. This might be worth keeping an eye on, making sure it doesn't go up too high. Over here, we've got uh, only 38 stacks. That's not too bad. That's not even enough to call for a train yet. So I think between the uh, this system over here is probably basically working. Although I do feel like that no, the number there in the storage is gradually going up as I watch it. Uh, so yeah, let's keep let, we'll keep an eye on that. Put it that way. Similarly, over in this area, with all of the, the random miscellaneous that's coming out down here. 
he started, he's realised that suddenly a load of Immersite came out, and he's not quite sure where from, although I suspect it's possible that's my fault. Although, no, it shouldn't be, because my, my spaceship additions over on Terra shouldn't have been bringing any um, any Immersite over to here. But anyway, he's reactivated. There's a there's a, a stuff to dump on Mike station around here somewhere, and it looks like it's, well, here's the Immersite coming out here under here. It's presumably this one over here. So we've got, yeah, we've got some stores, uh, some some tanks to store excess amounts of matter over here, which is what threw, threw me off a little bit, because they're right next to the track here. But no, this is just loading into, into this train here, and then when there's when there's too much stuff in here, well, when, when the train fills up, we can then send that over to dump stuff on Mike, which is down here somewhere in the new area he made up, made to deal with all of the random inputs that are coming over from that new planet of his, Andrican. Uh, I say new, he's not, he's not done anything with this for quite a while. But the idea is that over here, we can then bring in all of the all of those things can be dropped off over here. They'll be sorted out, go into the appropriate systems over here. And he's got his own little miniature Immersite for processing facility here that can then turn that into crystals and plates. So that will then eventually, when we get enough in one of these warehouses, we'll eventually call a train over to put, pick it up and take it away. Um, I don't think there's all that much Immersite coming in, but eventually, yeah, as I say, eventually we'll have enough in here. That all gets shipped over from Andragon, and this is the system we've talked about in the past, where we make sure we've put a decent amount of stone into this train, and then once we have, we can then unleash the miscellanea that's in this warehouse. And <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot. This, this is a very colourful warehouse. There's a lot of different things in here. Uh, but yeah, the, the plan is that it, um, when the when the train fills up with other with with plenty of stone, we can then start to shove miscellanea in because this is supposed to be a stone planet. But Mike decided it would be fun to try and harvest absolutely everything from it. So I don't know how that's getting on. Um, I did notice that when we filled the train up, then I don't. It didn't look like anything was released from this warehouse over here. I mean, the, st the stone passes through, of course, but uh, it's the things other than stone that are more interesting. And that runs on the signals is fed out from the train through the station over through through these two uh, pylons over here. And you can see that's now at six thousand, and that means this has just started to flow because that runs whenever it gets over six thousand. But this, very disappointingly, this is only passing through stone, which is boring to be quite honest, because we've got plenty of stone flowing through anyway, and. Yeah, I, I guess that's just going to run until we get through all of the stone, but there's a solid belt of stone coming in here. So I guess this means this system here is not going to output anything other than stone until this mine empties. And yeah, that's kind of boring. So it just means we're getting loads and loads of stone in this train, but we're not getting any of the weird colourful stuff. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's any realistic way to sort that because... As long as there's stone coming out of on, on this belt, I think it's going to carry on doing stone because of the way Factorio does stacks. Presumably it's the last thing, yeah, it's the last thing in the warehouse down here. So that's always going to, the stone is always going to be the thing that is chosen to put, be pulled out. And because we've got just as much stone going in on this side as we have coming out of these two belts, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just going to keep using it. And that's, that's less exciting. So I don't know what we can do about that, though, because there's far too many other different interesting things in here. So we can't put them all onto the filters here. You can't blacklist filter a loader. So I guess and we're, we're just stuck with that. Unless we put in more loaders down here and set one of them to... In fact, let's sort, sort the... I can sort the warehouse. That'll do it. That'll bring all the stone up to the top here. And then we'll, then we'll get enormous amounts of vitamin lines through. But there's one, two, three, four, five six different non-stone things in here. So I suppose you could put in another copy of this, like that, link it up with the cable in exactly the same way, and then have this one filtered for the first four of three of them, and then this one filtered for the other three. That way you might get a, a, a variety of stuff flowing through. It depends a little bit on also on the flow rate out on the other side over here, I think. Uh, once again, we do just seem to have stone coming out, and that's again a bit disappointing. We've got another stone all the way to the top, so if we sort that, then oh, and then the train immediately leaves. Eh, it's it's a tricky one getting it to be a bit, little bit more interesting, but but never mind. Let's 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 move on. Mark says that he set up an overflow stone brick area. So, uh, and I believe the idea of this is that when we have more stone than we know what to do with, any excess stone brick that then gets made can then be passed over to these warehouses down here. And presumably, he set up some sort of he's storing them at all in here, and then. Either he's got an enormous area of, of a base that he's trying to park carpet with stone bricks, or he's just coming out and noticing when this starts to fill up, and then get, and then and then putting down enormous blueprint areas of it. Um, either way, the point behind this is if we ever have too much stone in the in the core processing facility up here. So if we ever have these these warehouses fill up completely, then we can set the uh, the stone pouring through down into in, into where is it? Down into these warehouses, and then they'll be available for essentially a stone dump. Uh, 
but most of the time we don't want to be running that because at the moment we don't have an enormous amount of stone. If we look in the, the warehouses over here, okay, the, yeah, this one is is less than half full. There's not very much in there. And so we don't want to bring stone in from Andragon just to use it for paving Norvis. We want to use the, we only want to use this when there is an excess in the storage system over here. When this fills up and starts to back up, then, then it's going to be worth doing it. And currently that is not the case. We've seen it in the past, but currently it is not the case. Mark has also noticed that the antimatter production that's running over here in the deep space science area isn't running quite as quickly as he would like. And we can, we can see that actually, there, there is the system is not completely full. And this is because we've now got various spaceships that are using the antimatter, as well as it being used for one of the deep space sciences here and then being passed down to be t put into these capsules to be taken away in order to be used for making the Arcosphere collectors. So this seems to be running a bit faster than it was before, presumably. Uh, Mark noticed that there wasn't enough, uh, enough thermofluid available. And you can see here, actually, we're down to about 78 percent on that one and about 20 percent on the bottom on the bottom the bottom there and so he's extended the uh, the cooling system up here uh, by quite a bit in fact I would say and there's a little bit of power missing on the end there but never mind and so this system over here should now be capable of pumping churning through a, quite a bit more and we can see up here yes this duct up at the top here is completely full uh, this this pump here is running running happily and actually the pipe of thermo super cooled thermofluid at the top is completely full however we're losing a bit of pressure as we come down all the way down here to get to the uh, an antimatter production so maybe if this at the moment is not a problem all of these machines are running happily however if it does become a problem we could extend the ducting from here and then run a duct all the way down here with with, with it being tapped off every so often where it's needed which is going to be a bit of an effort and a bit of a faff but it certainly could be done without without too much headache I think and we could get the we could get a duct running down here instead of the instead of this normal pipe and that would massively increase the amount of throughput we get to down here however at the moment seems to be absolutely fine we've got 80% antimatter we've got uh, and we've still got 80% thermal fluid as well so I think I think things are going okay we're just trying to top this station back up again but we've got a full train here we've got another trains worth in the station so I think we're all right we're just trying to fill it back up again so we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that though and I think this is quite a good place to end the video so thank you very much for watching I hope it's been uh, interesting and useful and so on um, and uh, and um, don't forget to come back tomorrow when they'll be talking about the second half of all this all the bits and pieces of things that were happened in the last stream that I that I haven't talked about yet and there's and there's plenty of it don't worry uh, and I should be back on Sunday when we should be playing some more Warptorio so yes we've been playing with um, we're getting fairly close to end game in that now but that's a uh, so maybe we'll actually manage to finish it off on Sunday we shall see I don't know how much um, how much uh, grindy research there'll be left for us to do but yeah I think that's going very well that's a supporter stream so if you are a channel supporter that means a uh, a Twitch subscriber a YouTube member or a Ko-Fi donator please come along to the uh, the stream to uh, please come along and join in with the stream if you want to uh, it'll be great to have you along and then next week we'll be back on Monday for more uh, Factorio K2SE goodness and back on Wednesday of course for a bit more uh, satisfactory so hope to see you for all of that. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.